Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is doing well. Uh, crazy, crazy session, right? We always talk about, uh, you know, walking into violence, uh, you know, Fed days, uh, testimonies, uh, any type of, um, you know, any type of ominous news, political, geopolitical, uh, that could shake up the markets. The markets just don't like uh, uncertainty. And, you know, it really does show you how quickly uh, things change on a dime. Uh, you know, today started, uh, you know, very strong, like we've been seeing for the last, you know, seven, eight days. Uh, you know, no matter what the futures were doing, they were taking up technology. Uh, we had some phenomenal, I mean, absolutely phenomenal moves in the last four, five, six days. Uh, yet Apple continuing its breakout. And again, you'll see, you're going to see a lot of these inverted hammers. We'll get to that in a second. We had Apple, a phenomenal move from the 57 breakout uh, into the, you know, traded as high as the 162 today. And the video that we talked about last night on the video, just an absolute rock star move. Tesla had a big move. All these stocks had really, really big moves. Microsoft today, uh, you know, woke up very, very aggressively. We talked about it last night on the video, you know, just really aggressive moves. And then everybody knew the main event was on, right? That was kind of like the, the, the pre-course uh, kind of, uh, you know, the, the happy hour, right? You know, you know, people had their hors d'oeuvres, their, their cocktails, and now everybody's ready to eat. So we, we kind of knew, we talked about it last night on the video, uh, I, I thought a couple of things uh, could have possibly capped out. Uh, I, I, I didn't believe, if you watched last night's video, we started just uh, randomly talking about it, but I, I didn't think because of what was going on with the whole uh, banking scenario that we were going to raise 50 or 75 points. I, I didn't think that was on the table. Um, you know, I think the consensus was 25 basis points. I think that was uh, going into today. I, I thought there was an outside shot uh, that they would have, um, you know, they would have uh, um, cut rates, right? That was a very outside shot. I did believe, though, there was a shot that they would have left um, rates unchanged, okay, just as kind of a compromise. But, you know, the 25 basis points, it did make sense. So uh, as we all know, they raised by 25 basis points and the market went nuts. I mean, look, I mean, look, this is just to show you how uh, aggressive uh, today was. So, you know, the market, you know, the market went nuts. OK, the queues uh, ran from 310 uh, to 315, just an incredible move. Uh, everything was kind of going according to schedule. And then next thing you know, Powell started talking. Right. And what started off as early dovish comments, right? Those comments slowly but surely started getting muted, muted and muted and muted. And the next thing you know, they were gone. He turned around and basically said, look, we actually, the Fed, we actually thought about the potential of leaving rates unchanged. Uh, but the problem was, and this is when he started talking, right? Dot, 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 yada, yada, yada. The problem was we're not taming inflation for the exception of X uh, housing and core uh, it's still a big problem. And that's not what the market wanted to hear. If you would have just completely stopped at, well, we're monitoring the situation. We're going to give this uh, this month kind of a wait and see approach and see what happens the next month. But he didn't say that, right? I think that the market uh, ultimately would have been happier with just a 25 uh, basis point hike. It would have been a good compromise. And the next thing you know, you know, I logged off around 220, right? Powell started speaking around 230. Um, I, I firmly believe, first of all, 95% of my normal day is done before lunch, okay? Um, I, I am not a believer in trading in the eye of the hurricane. I, I was never, you know, I was never uh, that guy. Um, it, I just, too much volatility, too much violence. And I, I, I tweeted out, you know, maybe an hour uh, before the, you know, I before hour before the, uh, you know, the, the whole, you um, the whole pal testimony and i said what's the, you're getting so much value right between 9 30 and like let's just see and call it one why would you want to put yourself in a situation with all these random occurrences a random sequence that could possibly happen to trade the actual event and lo and behold when i when i left the, you know the nasdaq was up 100 and change uh when, when i you know went to pick up my daughter the nasdaq went red and yada 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 we're down 
one and a half percent. And if you look at the move on the Qs intraday, I mean, that's disgusting. I mean, absolutely disgusting. Uh, we went from 315 all the way down to 306, you know, within within an hour. Yeah, that's pretty violent. And again, if, if you're watching this broadcast for the first time, uh, we always talk about the same thing as, you know, we don't want excitement, especially all of us who are on the wrong side of 40, right? We don't want excitement. You know, we don't want our hearts to be pounding out of our chest. We, you know, we want boring. We want lethargic. We want predictable. We want organic. And that's nothing. Anytime you're faced with uh, some sort of um, event, which with its Fed earnings, anything that you don't have control you're always going to put yourself in a situation that 87 wicks are going to come both long and short. They're going to all stop you out of your positions uh, before the natural run. And you put yourself in a situation that you've lost your edge. You've lost uh, your dynamics and you, you have lost all control of the day. And, and I've, I've been saying this for years. Anytime there's an event, you know, people always say, how do you trade the event? No, I don't trade the event. I trade leading up to the event. And I kind of finish off my day, you know, right around lunchtime and then, Kind of, if I have any runners, I'll manage them. But other than that, I kind of leave it alone. Just because, again, here's a perfect scenario that you had a six point, you know, move to the upside and then a nine point reversal. Again, who the hell, right? Who the hell's smart enough uh, to even can can it, even get your mind uh, to wrap around such uh, aggression? But hey, listen, if you made both sides of the market today, fantastic. Bulls uh, did well in the morning. Uh, Bears obviously did phenomenal uh, in the last hour. Everybody's happy. Unless you're not happy and then, you know, again, you have more problems than uh, the market or yours truly uh, can help you with. But again, to each his own. So where does that leave us, right? Where does that leave us? That leaves us with a lot of inverted hammers, okay? Uh, again, inverted hammers are not a good thing or at least not a, sh a good short-term thing, right? So if you, again, if you go look at any chart, I I any chart of any symbol, right? Go do your homework today. Uh, any random chart, you'll see every single time there's an inverted hammer, the next day there's a high probability, right? And again, it's not uh, 100%, but there's a high probability that we're going to follow through in that direction. If you just look at the Q's chart from here, right? Here's an inverted hammer on the 26th. The 27th was a down day. Here's an inverted hammer on, uh, on November the 2nd. The next day was a down day, right? Here's an inverted hammer on the 16th. The next day was a down day. You, get, you follow my point? Right, so you can see, just go by inverted hammer, inverted here. Here's another inverted hammer, another down day, right? Here's another inverted hammer, gap down day. Here's another inverted hammer right here, we went down again. So here's an inverted hammer, right? Inverted hammer. So, uh, you know, again, look, uh, I, I would think majority of the charts going into tomorrow, um, you know, they're in the middle of the ranges, okay? Um, I will be looking at some of the recent big high flyers, um, you know, like a Coinbase potentially, right? Like a Coinbase had a really, really big move. I'm going to watch the previous day's lows. If it starts taking out, maybe it could be a good candidate for a back test. Uh, maybe NVIDIA after a phenomenal, phenomenal run. And congratulations for you guys who've been trading this thing uh, to the upside for for you know for the last week or so. But again, got another inverted hammer. You know, I'm going to watch uh, today's range. If this thing starts losing, uh, maybe gets down to um, you know back down to the five-day moving average. So if you look at the Qs, uh, the big number tomorrow is going to be this 306 level. So uh, if you are saying a little prayer tonight, right, let's hope that the market gaps up tomorrow because if it gaps up tomorrow and we start losing the last two days of range, then yeah, we will get a, an aggressive back test. Um, it, it, it's so funny that, you know, traders are, are so hell-bent about uh, being right, okay? We trade both sides of the market. Again, if you've been watching this broadcast, and again, I thank you very much for your uh, viewership, right, means a lot for your support. Thank you. Like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. So thank you very much uh, for checking us out every single day. But if you've been watching this, again, we're, we're not we're not in the business of being smart. Okay, we're not in the business of being right. We're in the business of being prepared on both sides of the market. Uh, you know, you take what the data gives you and you trade uh, off that data. And if the market sent them in switches, guess what? We switch as well. Again, we're not bears. We're not bulls. Right, we're opportunists, and that's all you can ask yourself uh, as a trader. Are you going to get the highs of the day every single day? Absolutely not. Are you going to print the lows of the day in your shorts? Absolutely not. You're going to have some losses. You're going to have some stumbles along the way, like you do every single day. But the most important thing is to be solvent. You know, to be uh, prepared for the next day. So it's very, very important. Um, you know, it's very, very important that um, uh, you know, it's very, very important to stay humble, stay. Uh, very uh, sharp. And I see people on, on social media, oh, you see, the bulls never learned.
Bulls, excuse my French, hopefully you know Kyler could bleep that out. But the Qs just ran from 285 to 315. What are you celebrating? Right. Let's be honest with ourselves. What are you celebrating? Right. Congratulations. You caught a sell-off. Be a professional. Right. Be a professional. You make some money, lose some money. You give the ball to the ref, you move on. Right. The question is, can you do it again? And that's the point. It's not about being right. It's about being prepared. It's about being solid, especially uh, for the new trader. So going into tomorrow, 306 is the magic number. If we gap below 306, then we're watching, obviously, uh, opening range lows. If we get those opening range lows, then hell, if there's a day two reversal, then yes, the 10-day moving average uh, is 300. But again, the market is not just going to roll over tomorrow and die. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. But the point is, you're going to see a lot of stocks fighting to keep their ranges. And if you look at a lot of charts, for example, you know, like a Tesla, we talked about it last night to get, you know, possibly getting to that 201 level, right? Da, 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 da. I got within 20 cents of 201, right? When you look at stocks like Tesla, when you look at stocks like Apple that had a great run, Microsoft that had a great, great run, then that can just roll over. They still have to take down one or two days worth of bottom channels to, to be a valid short. So I, I, I could see a scenario tomorrow that both sides are just not clicking, right? I could see a lot of up, down, up, down, up, down until finally... Uh, they, you know, they might pick a direction towards the end of the day uh, or even towards the end of the morning. But the most important part is, like I say, for example, is to be prepared, right? Today, we were prepared to the upside of Microsoft. Tomorrow, we got two bottom channels here that are watching to the downside. So don't paint yourself in the corner. Be nimble. Be smart. Have a plan. And don't anticipate, right? Wait till that plan confirms so you can trigger, right? You can confirm and enter with a lot of of uh, conviction and a lot of confidence. So let's talk about today. Again, as you can imagine, uh, everything was to the upside in the morning. Like I said, very aggressive morning. Uh, and then the last hour, the bears, you know, seized control of everything. So Amazon, uh, Amazon triggered at, um, uh, at FOMC, went from 101 to 102. And then like everything else got murdered, right? Uh, and the video was huge. We talked about this last night in the video. I, I believe I even I even gave the 264 number uh, on the video last night for everybody to be prepared. 264 rejected twice needs to build. Uh, the video went absolutely out of its mind, out of its mind today. Look at this move here from this 264 level traded all the way up uh, to almost 276 before this nasty, nasty reversal. But a great, great move there. Uh, Apple was phenomenal. Again, congratulations for all you guys. Uh, we closed this damn thing out literally 30 cents before the the, the earnings on uh, the day earnings or the morning highs, which is great near the 160 area. I know it traded to nearly 63, but I was already after uh, after the morning session. Uh, Microsoft had a nice spike here, 275 uh, needs to build. Here is Mr. Softy. So it went from 275 all the way up to uh, uh, 281. Uh, Roblox never got there. TTD never got there. Squared never got there. And again, here's my, you know, here's uh, all, all the people who were long uh, Tesla overnight. Really, really solid move. Congrats to those who came in long. Two, uh, 255, 201 is the next supply. The high of the day today was $200.66. You can see how really, really important uh, technical analysis is. Obviously, never never got above the 201 uh, to get to the next level. And I believe that was it. Yep, that was it. So, uh, very aggressive day, uh, very aggressive session. Um, you know, look, I, I, I always believe that uh, the morning session gives you about three to four hour window to really capitalize on your research from the night before. Then it becomes very random. You have uh, news com comes out of left field, Biden, Schmiden, this one, the other one, Fed, you know, voting members, not voting members, but at least we can agree today on one thing. Today, the Fed actually made the market move. Guys, God bless. Have a great night. Hope everybody's doing well, and I'll see you all tomorrow. Take care.